Welcome to the Crazy Ahead Chemist. So today we're doing the 34th video on uh, electrons and atoms. And we've got a lot to do today. So, BAM! So, electron configuration, orbital box diagram, and quantum numbers for lithium and nickel. Okay, so what I need you to do is pull out a periodic table. Okay, find uh, lithium on the periodic table. It's Z of 3. Find nickel on the periodic table. That's Z of 28. So we're first going to do uh, lithium, and then we're going to work ourselves into nickel. Okay, so lithium is N, uh, uh, sorry, the Z of 3. So that's uh, 3 protons, so 3 electrons. So let's do that right now. So lithium, a Z of 3. We're going to write out the electron configuration. That's 1s2, 2s1. Very simple electron configuration. Um, and then we're going to keep on going from there. We're going to write the orbital box diagram as well. Hopefully the number of boxes is okay with you. That is a single box for S-type orbitals. Now we're going to place the electrons in those boxes as is appropriate according to Pauli exclusion principle, Hund's rule, Aufbau principle, etc. Okay? So, first electron is up, second electron is down in the same orbital. That orbital is now done. You can only fit two electrons maximum in an orbital. Now, the final electron is up. All right, fantastic. Now, this is paramagnetic, okay? It's paramagnetic because that one unpaired electron in the 2s orbital, therefore, this is attracted to a magnetic field, Okay, there is one valence electron, so it's the largest quantum number, two, of the same orbital of only s and p type orbitals, so there's a 2s1, so there's one valence electron. You should also be able to look on your periodic table, and since lithium is in group one, it has one valence electron, that is another way to do it, the alkaline metals all have one valence electron. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to circle this electron here. Why this electron? It's just because I arbitrarily chose this electron. No other reason. It happens to be the last electron in lithium, but I didn't have to circle that one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the set of four quantum numbers to represent that particular electron. That is the value of N, the value of L, the value of M sub L, and the value of M sub S. Okay, so here are the four quantum numbers to designate that blue circled electron. So the question is, where are these numbers coming from? So if you didn't get that right away, then here's how we're going to come up with these numbers. Notice that I've labeled the orbital box diagram very precisely. It is a 2s type orbital. So what's the n? It is a 2. That's why the 2s and the n go together, hopefully. Okay. Now, what type of orbital is it? It's an S-type orbital, and therefore the L designation designates what type of orbital. When it's L of 0, it's an S-type orbital. Okay, what box is this in? That is plus, the M sub L values are plus or minus all of the L values. What's the L value? It's 0. Um, it could also be 1, but it is 0 in this case, because there's only a single box. So plus or minus that single box there is a zero, and that's why we get that zero. Hopefully that will make more sense when we do the nickel example. And then that arrow is going up, it's going it's um, up, it's going to heaven. Remember, heaven is generally viewed as positive, so therefore that's why that is M sub S value. The magnetic spin quantum number is positive one half. You always have to have the sign with the M sub S value. So hopefully that worked out really well for you for lithium. Now you're going to move on to nickel. Find nickel on the periodic table. That's atomic number 28, Z of 28. You're going to write out the electron configuration for nickel. So use your periodic table. Start with 1s1, 1s2, 2s1, 2s2, 2p1, 2p3, 4, 5, 6, etc. Okay? And you should have this here for nickel. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, and 3d, 3d8. Remember, the d's are one less than the period in which they are in. Okay, I can also write this with the noble gas um, bra in brackets. Those are not parentheses, those must be brackets. And then there, after the noble gas, is 4s2, 3d8. That is the noble gas core, and this whole thing is called the noble gas notation. 
you're going to have to ask your instructor if the noble gas notation is okay or not. I could have done the noble gas notation for lithium, but it would be helium, that is HE, in brackets, and then 2S1. It really doesn't help us out with lithium whatsoever. Okay, now what we're going to do is write the orbital box diagram for nickel. And so we need to write the appropriate number of boxes. So how many boxes do you have for S-type orbitals? A single box. How many for P-type orbitals? How many for P? Three. And how many for um, D-type orbitals? Five. Remember, it's one, three, five, seven, as far as the number of boxes. I have the boxes labeled and numbered correctly here. I've combined the P's of the same principal quantum number and the type of orbital. I've combined the D's of the same principal and the same type of orbital as well. Now I'm going to take my time here and place these electrons in these boxes in the order in which I am following as far as placing electrons in the atom. So first one is up, second one is down. I filled up that box. First one is up, second one is down. A maximum of two electrons in n orbital. Okay, next electron is up. Okay, then there after this, then I have to do parallel spins in new orbitals. Okay, that's that one up there. Then that one up there. Now I'm going to backfill, starting with the first box that is unpaired with an anti-parallel spin. And now I have a down and a down and a down. Hopefully that makes sense. Now the 3S box, I got an up and I got a down. I'm going to do the same thing with the 3P that I did with the 2P. That's an up and an up and an up. And then I'm going to backfill it and a down and a down and a down. And then I'm going to do the 4S, that's an up, and that's a down. Okay, now this is where the rubber really hits the road, because this 3D orbital set is not completely filled, so you need to do this in the correct order. That is an up, an up, and an up. And unlike the P's, there are more boxes to half fill with the same parallel spin. So you need to keep on going until you filled them all half filled, okay, of the same M sub S positive spin up. Now I'm going to backfill. Okay, one, two, three, and that is a total of 3D8. So that's why I've stopped right there for 3D8. Okay, you could do the same thing with the noble gas notation as you see here. I'm just filling this in here for you. It's going to be the same thing. The noble gas notation is really nice because with the noble gas notation, then you can clearly see that it's a much faster shorthand note. Okay, all right, so I'm going to circle an electron, and then that electron, we're going to write a set of four quantum numbers to represent that electron. Oh, by the way, this is paramagnetic because there are unpaired electrons. Nickel does, uh, 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 is attracted to a magnetic field. Okay, um, There are two valence electrons in nickel. Notice that nickel is in the D set. So being that it's in the D set, remember you're wearing the boot. How many boots do you wear? Two boots. So it's in the D. Anything that ends in a D or an F has two valence electrons, okay? Because the largest principal quantum number is a 4 with the 4S. And all the 4 type orbitals with nickel, uh, there's a 4S, there's no 4P, there's no 4D, there's no 4F. So I just count up the number of valence electrons in the 4, okay? Um, the largest principal, largest principal quantum number, S and P only, give me valence electrons. Okay, now I'm going to finally circle that electron, and I've chosen to circle this one. It is not the last electron that we drew out, so we can't use our periodic table to just directly go from the periodic table to write out the set of quantum numbers that represent that particular electron. So, um, pause the video, give yourself a moment, try to write out the set of four quantum numbers to represent that circled electron, then restart the video here, and then let's see what you got. So this is what I got. That's N of 3, L of 2, M sub L of negative 2, and M sub S of negative 1 half. So I'm going to go and delineate what how I got each one of these here. So the first one is it's in a 3D type orbital. It's a 3 uh, N of 3 type orbital, so I've circled those both for you. And it's a 3D type orbital, so that's why L of 2. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to label the boxes right above the 3D orbitals here. I usually label it a below, but this time I'm labeling it above just so that you can see it. On the far left-hand side, it's negative 2, then negative 1, and then 0, and 1, and 2. Those are the M sub L values. I happen to be in the negative 2 box, therefore that's why it's 
m sub l of negative 2. Now, of the electron that I did circle, that is a downward-facing arrow. That arrow is going to hell. That is generally viewed negatively, and that's why that's m sub s as negative 1 half. Again, you do need the sign always for the m sub s value. Okay? Redo that slide. Redo those two examples. Make sure that you understand the quantum numbers. Okay, the valence electrons, you should be able to get the valence electrons directly from the periodic table or the electron configuration or the orbital box diagram. Check out that noble gas notation because it is a nice shortcut if your professor teacher will allow it. Okay, that was another video. I have another hat for you and this hat means a lot to me because it is actually my grandmother's on my father's side. So it's not really a crazy hat, but it is my grandmother's. So I found that that was pretty cool in and of itself. Give me a thumbs up if you like that video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I will see you next time. Have a great day. Bye now.